Amen. Open the Word of God with me to Ephesians chapter number 1, please. Ephesians chapter 1 in your Bibles. I'm grateful for this opportunity to stand behind this pulpit that God has used to help and change my own life. I appreciate Pastor Sexton and this great privilege. Ephesians chapter 1 in your Bibles. Before we begin reading in verse 13 in just a moment, I want you to know that the Word of God is quick. That word quick means that it is alive. It is powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And I want you to know as we take our Bibles this evening and open to Ephesians chapter 1 that every time we open the Bible, we are opening the very mind of God. And let's see what God has for us this evening. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number uh, 13. We'll begin reading there. In whom ye also trusted... After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. I want to speak to you about a truth this evening that that is encouraging to me. And I don't know of anything that would be more encouraging uh, to my own heart and to you, I want to, I want to speak to you this evening about the sealed Christian, the sealed Christian, about the seal of the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian. Look back with me to, a, to verse 13 there of Ephesians chapter 1. Look towards the end of the verse. It says, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And I want, I want to notice a few things about this. A seal is a symbol in Scripture. You'll find that all through the Bible, a seal uh, mentioned, and it, a, a symbol always symbolizes something that makes sense. And there's three truths that I find in this passage, as well as all the way through Scripture, that a seal symbolizes. I want to speak speak to you about those those three truths. Think about a seal, a seal with me. I think I, th- I think most of you know what a seal is. Our college has a logo. You might call that a seal. A lot of times, somebody may have gotten a Hallmark card from somebody. That's a good thing, right? On the back of those Hallmark envelopes or on that, those cards, you'll see a seal of Hallmark. There's a little crown-looking thingy there, and it'll say Hallmark under it. That's the seal of Hallmark. When you see that, it represents something. It's a symbol. And I want to talk to you about some things that the Holy Spirit symbolizes in our lives as the seal in our lives. I want you to notice first that there, it symbolizes perfect finality, perfect finality. Look back at verse number 13. Now let's read the whole verse here. It says, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So Paul's writing to the Ephesians church, church here and he's telling them that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Then it says, in whom also, after that ye believed, immediately You are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Really, it's at the same instance. As soon as a person trusts Christ, they're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. God places a seal upon that person at the moment of their salvation. That they don't have to do anything else. Nothing else has to be done. They don't have to work something out or wait for a certain moment when that seal is applied. The moment they believe, they have the seal of the Holy Spirit placed upon them. There's perfect finality there. There's, there's something that is finished and complete, final. All we have to do is accept it and believe it. And at that moment, at that moment, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. I'm thankful that I don't have to add something to it. I don't have to work it up. I don't, I don't even have to search for it. It's right there. God's given it to us in his word. All we have to do is believe it. God seals us with the Holy Spirit. Look, there's not some kind of seal of baptism. There's not, you don't have to join the baptism association. You don't have to join the church, churchgoers association. You don't have to be in the good workers club. No, no, no. All we have to do is believe that gospel. At the moment we believe it, there's finality there. God places that seal upon us. There's perfect finality to it. Look back at our text here. Look at verse number 14. I want to show... Um, show you something there. Uh, Verse number 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. I want to, you don't have to turn here, but I want to read a passage to you, just a couple of things out of it. Jeremiah chapter number 32, and I'm going to just show a few things to you out of Jeremiah chapter number 32 and verse verse number 10. 
This is talking about a field that was basically purchased. And it says in verse number 10 of Jeremiah 32, And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witnesses and weighted him the money and the balances. We're not going to read through this whole passage, but all through this passage, the word evidence, the word witnesses, uh, evidence, evidence mentioned over and over again, talking about this seal. It says he took the money and sealed it, that he purchased that field, and that was done, and it was sealed, it was finished, final. There was perfect finality to it. Psalm 22 is one of the messianic psalms, probably the most descriptive of Christ's death. At the end of that psalm, it says, he hath done this. The gospel according to John chapter 19, verse number 5, while Christ was hanging upon the cross, he said and cried out, it is finished. And in the book of Revelation, two times, it is said, it is done. I want you to know it's complete, final. There is perfect finality to it. Secondly, I want you to notice there is a promised security. A promised security. Look at verse number 14 again in Ephesians 1. The word of God says, Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. The word earnest uh, the word earnest there is a, 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 sign, a sign, signifying that, uh, that it has been completed and uh, it, it means that the debt will be paid. It's, it's like a down payment that was made signifying that, that the rest of it will be paid and has been paid. There is a, there's a promised security there. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 is another place where the seal of the Holy Spirit is mentioned. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, Whereby ye are sealed, notice these last, this last expression, unto the day of redemption. We are sealed unto the day of redemption, not just until tomorrow or a week or two from now, but unto the day of redemption, the day that God calls us home. We are sealed and there's a promised security there. It's like a letter that is enclosed and, and sealed and you send that letter out in that envelope expecting it to arrive. Sometimes I've sent out a check or money in an envelope and you're a little bit anxious about it arriving. But I want you to know when God saves us and seals us, we don't have to worry about reaching our destination. He's sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise and I want you to know there's promised security in this seal. And lastly, there's a permanent custody. Permanent custody. Back in verse number 14, the expression, the purchased possession, until the redemption of the purchased possession, that's all believers who've trusted in Christ. It symbolizes custody. I want you to know this evening that I am a child of the king, and I am glad of it. John chapter 15, verse 26, verse 26 says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, the Word of God says, He shall testify of me. That was Jesus talking. He was saying, hey, that Holy Spirit that's going to seal you, he's going to testify of me. I want you to know one day every one of us are going to stand before God. And if you're a born again Christian, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. You know what God's going to see? He's not going to see you. He's going to see that seal of the Holy Spirit. You know what that seal is going to say? It's going to testify of Jesus. And God's going to see Jesus Christ upon you and me symbolizing that we've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and we'll be in heaven with the Lord Jesus. In Pastor Sexton's book, Truths Every Christian Needs to Know, he wrote, he already has the residency, but we need to give him the elected presidency. We, he, has, he has custody of us. He is already in the throne room, but friend, we need to give him the throne. So often we talk about being Christians and one of God's children. So often we don't live that way. I want to challenge you. Live as a sealed Christian who has a seal of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank thee for thy word. I thank you for thy goodness to us. Lord, I pray that you would help us to live the Christian life knowing that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God until the day of redemption. We thank you for Christ and what he's done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.